If you've ever found yourself in the unfortunate position of having to use Windows 10 either on a physical machine or installed in a virtualized environment like I have here, then you've probably been annoyed by Cortana. Now, if you've been living under a rock for the past 10 years and you don't know what Cortana is, it's basically the digital assistant that Microsoft built into Windows 10. You can just think of Cortana as Siri's third cousin that has Down syndrome because I don't know anybody using Windows 10 that actually uses Cortana. I've installed Windows 10 for probably close to a thousand people when I was working at Geek Squad and none of the people that I set it up for used it. In fact, a lot of them would actually ask me, hey, how do I turn off Cortana? I don't actually use it. And because most of the people that are bringing computers to Geek Squad are less knowledgeable about computers than normies. You have to just tell them, oh no, you can't do it. Because if I showed them the actual way to do it that I'm gonna show you guys, it would probably just end up fucking up their systems. Now, maybe you're wondering, why is Cortana such a big deal? Why would I want to even bother turning off Cortana in the first place? Why don't I just ignore it? Uh, there's a few reasons why. So first of all, Cortana, just like all of the software that's gonna be running in Windows, is proprietary. We don't actually know what it's doing. We don't know what it has access to. As far as we know, it could just be copying all of the files in your nudes folder and sending them directly to the FBI. Um, Another reason why is because, so you see this little leaf that's next to Cortana and some of these other processes like Windows, I mean, uh, Microsoft Edge. So this leaf basically means that these processes are going to get first pickings at your RAM. And I created this virtual machine just to test some software that I'm making for work, okay? I don't wanna dedicate a lot of resources to it. I don't wanna have to give it more RAM than I need to give it. Now, right now, I've only given it one gig of RAM. I don't really have much to spare in my system. I've only got 16 gigs, and you can see that Windows and everything else running in it is eating up 71% of my precious gig of RAM. Now, Cortana isn't using anything right now at the moment, but if I just come down here and click into the search bar, all of a sudden the RAM usage surges. I haven't even searched for anything yet, and it's gone above 66 megs of RAM, which is more than my entire Gen 2 system uses. So. Microsoft really should let us have access to the code because it's probably really bloated. A lot of these functions could probably be refactored. So anyway, on to the actual process to disable Cortana. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up your registry editor and hit yes, because it's an administrator task. And you're not gonna have this folder yet. So you wanna click on this Windows folder here, and then you want to right click and do new and do a key. Now a key in this context is actually going to be a folder. So call that folder Windows Search and then you're gonna have this right here. Now, you should already have this default value that's set here that's not set. Now, in this white space, you need to right click, do a new, and then a D word 32-bit value. And you're gonna to wanna to give it a name, so I called this one Allow Cortana, and then you want to have the value set to this zero. Um, you actually just need to set it as zero, like if I went, go and modify it here. So this is the actual dialog box that would open where you can set the name and the value. Just set it to zero. It's really going to be equal to the hexadecimal value though. Um, and it should be that by default. So you probably don't even have to even type in the zero there. So go ahead and set that. Now, um, this isn't all you need to do to disable Cortana because if you try to disable Cortana the way that you normally would, I mean, there's no uh, boxes to click on to close it or anything, so maybe you'll try to stop it from the task manager. Well, if you end the task, what's gonna happen is Cortana is just going to respawn, right? It's gonna respawn and then it's gonna eat up some of your RAM usage and this really sucks. I want that RAM usage to be available for the actual processes I'm gonna use. I mean, I don't use Windows 10 for the sake of using Windows 10. I'm only using it because the software I'm making doesn't work in Linux. I need to use C Sharp for it. Um, so what you're gonna want to do is 
uh, click this to open up the sub processes of Cortana and you want to click on this one here that's just called Cortana and you want to open the file location. So this is going to open up your system apps folder and it should already highlight the folder that's responsible for Cortana. If it doesn't, just find the folder here that has Cortana followed by a string of random characters. And what you're going to want to do is right click on it, rename it, and then just put something at the end of this. So I'm just going to put .off. And then this file operation box is going to pop up and you hit yes, and then it's going to tell you that this operation cannot be completed because the file that is in this folder is in use. Because as you know, you can't rename a folder if there is a process running inside of it. So what we're gonna have to do now, and this might actually fail, um, because basically what you wanna do is you want to kill this Cortana process, and then you wanna click back over here and hit try again before it's able to respawn. But this might fail because I already killed the Cortana process once. And what I've noticed is if you kill the Cortana process off a couple of times, it will start to respawn even faster and it'll respawn so fast that this method doesn't even work. But if that happens to you, you can just restart your computer to get around it. So let's see if I'm lucky here. We want to right click on Cortana and the task, try again and boom, it actually worked that time. So now you'll see that there is no Cortana. Even if I filter by name, and I try to look for the C's, there is no Cortana, and we can doubly see that it's uh, disabled because this search bar doesn't even work now, and it is persistent uh, across time until you actually change back the name of that folder until it, to its original name. So let me restart and show you guys this awesomeness. Might take a moment because I've only got one gig of RAM. There we go. Nice little Windows 10 search bar, a little bit of software gore on the splash screen. Don't you just love Windows 10 and how slow it is? It's almost like Microsoft wants their operating system to be a piece of crap. All right, so we're loaded back in, fire up my task manager, and sure enough, there is no Cortana. So that's how you kill off Cortana once and for all. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this. I know normally I do videos on Linux, but I need to use Windows 10 right now for a work project. And what I'm gonna try to do is just de-bloat it a little bit because I really don't want to give a second CPU thread or you know two gigs of RAM to this machine. I really wanna see if I can get away with testing this software on one thread and uh, one gig of RAM because I'm going to be uh, threading this um, into multiple processes, this particular automation software that I'm making for my job. And I wanna make sure that it's able to run on one CPU thread and one gig of RAM because if it can, then I'm gonna be able to scale it. And on my laptop, it'll probably be able to run like uh, four or five threads. So let me know what you guys think about this. If you want to, know how to disable some of these other system processes that Microsoft tries to keep you from disabling.